recommended. Uh, okay, I give you one example that is featured in Bosch. No longer Bosch, you need a Bosch, you know. Next is postmodern companies like some Agree. They claim 
even if it was just uh, uh, attacking the supermarket, whatever, nonetheless, it was a large, large scale protest. But where I disagree with them was that they claimed you begin like this and then make it a proper political move. Yeah. I tell them, okay, but this second step will never happen. But no, it's like Stalin is per se. Okay, we have some violence, murders, gulags, like but we punch in an probably lead intellectuals, society, social, secular life, neither corrupted our industrial complex, nor muscular brotherhood, away. You know, I always quote today Walter Benjamin, who said that behind every fascist there is a face. We should never forget the so-called muscular So cynical. No, by pseudo conflict, I mean, of course, it's a tragedy. People are dying and so on. It's simply an uh, uh, ethnic religious conflict. No big emancipatory states are involved now. I am totally against Assa. I believe in incredible brutality there. Now, 
you stop? Now we can say long live Stalin or what? We are, we are not recorded there. Or Slavoj Žižek is a big, friendly Slovenian Marxist intellectual who spends as much time blathering on about Batman films as he does about Hegel. He's written about 75 books, most of which remain impenetrable to me, but it's his public appearances, both at lectures and at events like Occupy Wall Street, which have really cemented his position as the most broadly popular anti-capitalist philosopher working today. This is because, unlike pretty much every other anti-capitalist philosopher, he actually has a sense of humour. His latest project is a film, The Pervert's Guide to Ideology, directed by Sophie Fiennes. In it, Slav uses Hollywood blockbusters to explain why the bulk of us remain so enthralled to capitalist power structures that we cannot even escape them in our sleep. I wanted to know why I was such a sheeple, so I went to Slovenia to meet them. Hello. You hate life? I'm not kidding. I wasn't for independence. I also didn't have any Yugoslavian stuff. Many leftists had. They considered the greater death. My nostalgia is for the old times. type of a joker guy. I mean joker from Batman. No. Yeah, I, know. I laugh and so on, but I can be a Stalinist. When I, if you give me power, I know how to use it. It's like I'm afraid of the story. I'm extremely sensitive to people that you are my type. Yeah. Yeah. No, even in love relations. You know what's my motto? I quote Lacan. When he says, my fiancé is never late for the appointment because the moment she is late, she's no longer my fiancé. That's the attitude. You know what's one of my feel about making films because obviously the pervert's guide to ideology is coming out this that's is how you what are talking about a very dramatic point i disgusted Put it back. You 
film start with a clip from the playlist, which I felt was a great thing. If we were able to put on those glasses, yeah. what do you think would happen? If everyone in the world suddenly put on the playlist, what would you think they'd be? Yeah. I, think, I, I, I claim that. Uh, okay, I'll give you one example a typical boss. No longer wants to be a boss, you know. Imagine this postmodern company like some digital programming company, creative agency. A boss is that comes in tunes, embraces you with all uh, uh, vulgarities. Did you have a good fuck last night, whatever? But fuck you, then he remains a boss. He nonetheless gives orders. But the social game is you have to pretend that we are friends and so on. In this relations, the first step to liberation is to force him to really behave like a boss. To tell him, no, fuck you, no comradeship, treat me as a boss, give me explicitly orders and so on. Well, sorry, seriously, uh, can I give you some fucking fruit juice or I coke? I love some fucking yeah. fruit juice. Yeah. Yeah. Coke, ice tea. So uh, here it's included, the cancer you get, because it's zero, which means instead of sugar you get all those sweeteners. Some films that you seem to be pretty interested in, although very critical of, are the like, Christopher Nolan Batman films. This is how crazy Batman's made Gotham. If you want order in Gotham, Batman must take off his mask and turn himself in. Oh, every day he doesn't, people will die. Starting tonight. I think he's a great director. I don't think Christopher Nolan has no, a conservative no, agenda. Liberal. He is a liberal who is afraid of too much uh, commotion, too much, too, too violent. But he says, Yourself change you, ties you to the ruling idiot. Within the film, you seem to use his, uh, his suicide as a an example of what people should be doing. People should be violently ripping themselves uh, apart from the ideology. Yeah, but you have more intelligent ways to do it. Like my favorite example here from Fight Club. You know when he confronts his boss, then starts to be himself. This is a much more painful shock scene than even attack directly the boss. This is a better If you want to look at it of ideology, if you want to really to get free, first you have to be yourself. Ideology is not only the world we live in, but especially the wrong ways we imagine how to escape. There, precisely when you dream how to escape from reality, you just reproduce the same world. I was in the London riots, and we talked about the London riots, and what struck me being in them, reporting on them, was how different they were to riots. I've been in Greece, or I've been in Germany. Yeah, every violent acting out a sign that there is something you are not able to put into words. Even the most brutal violence is the enacting of a certain symbolic death. I wanted to 
find out if you thought that this was an example of the true power of ideology when for one night the superstructure collapsed and yeah. people seemed yeah. to be allowed to do whatever they wanted, yet all they wanted to do was steal more yeah, trainers exactly. and consume more. But for this I'm hated by many leftists who desperately try to redeem the London riots. They claim, and I partially, very partially agree, they claim even if it was just uh, uh, attacking the supermarket, whatever, nonetheless it was a blind, large-scale protest. But where I disagree with them was that they claim you begin like this and then you make it a proper political movement. Yeah. I tell them, okay, but this second step will never happen. <laughs> you know, it's like Stalinists were saying, okay, we have some violence, purges, gulags now, but wait one generation, then we will have, uh, uh, sorry, that second step will never arrive. If you look at practically all revolutions, they happen when things get a little bit better, a little bit of opening, then expectations explode and are disappointed and so on. Look even at Egypt. Mm. I'm sorry to tell you, this is horrible to say, but you know that under Mubarak, Egyptians probably lived relatively well on average. There was a new middle class and so on and so on. And they... Yeah, it was the middle class that rose yeah. up to overthrow Mubarak. Yeah, and there we also saw in a tragic way the limitation because uh, the middle class, there was no more broad popular left for them to get connected to. I think some people with Egypt uh, seem to assume that because of this kind of revolving situation of coups, all of the revolutions have been rendered pointless. I wonder if you think that it's kind of that the seeds of something more revolutionary have been set with in the, the long term yes because you know I'm not a total pessimist there it's not simply that we are back at Mubarak's time something did happen to put it in pathetic terms civil society awakened you have a whole network of trade unions women organized intellectuals society social secular life neither corrupted army industrial complex nor Muslim Brotherhood awakened. And this is something, you know, I always quote today Walter Benjamin, who said that behind every fascism there is a failed revolution. We should never forget that so-called Muslim fundamentalists are an ersatz for the failed left. The key event in Arab countries of the last decades is the disappearance of secular left. Take Afghanistan. Yeah. Afghanistan was not a conservative fundamentalist country. I remember 40 years ago, it was a progressive monarchy with a pro-Western king. Then they had a local communist party, which was so strong that it even took over. And then, you know, Russia intervened, Americans supported fundamental uh, uh, Muslim. That is to say, 40 years ago, Afghanistan was a relatively open, technocratic, secular country. It is true, it's very involvement into international politics that it became fundamentalist. And, and even uh, Islamic fundamentalism has its roots in kind of Saikatub and his uh, kind of Marxist view That's, of Islam. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think so. I think that this is the big task today. How to get out of this vicious cycle of pro-Western liberalism and fundamentalism, they are really feeding upon each other, I think. What do you think is going to happen with Syria? Because there doesn't seem to be... Oh, I was so attacked for saying, uh, uh, when I wrote, they published it in a Guardian only on the net, that it's a pseudo-conflict. What do you mean by it being a pseudo Yeah, yeah, I know that all oh, pseudo-conflict, but people are dying, how can you be so cynical? No, by pseudo-conflict, I mean, of course, it's a tragedy, people are dying and so on. It's simply... Uh, uh, ethnic religious conflict, no big emancipatory stakes are involved now. I am totally against Assad. I believe in incredible brutality they are doing, but with this poisonous gases, okay, what makes me furious here is now media start to tell this story, oh my God, uh, uh, they are poisoning their own population, where, where Saddam was doing this against Iranians at Kurds, United States were giving him uh, uh, satellite photos, we all know, and providing him even gases. I don't like to be manipulated and shown by the media, you see, it's horrible what happens there. Yeah, it's horrible, but my God, every revolution is not only, if it is an authentic revolution, is not only directed towards the future, but it redeems also the past failed revolutions. All 
the ghosts, as if were the living dead of the past revolution, which are roaming around unsatisfied, will finally find their home in the new freedom. I know what will you do then to me. Then I have to sign yeah, some yeah, paper, yeah. which basically means hardcore. You can use me. Yes. You can put my head on a guy fucking <laughs> three women, and I cannot complain. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot you wouldn't complain if we did. I don't care. That's true. I don't care. That's true. Yes. <sighs>